All righty, up next we have uh, Mr. Christian Sorensen, founder and CEO of uh, SiteGain, from Threats to Risk, How the Anatomy of Cyber Response Reveals Risks. Let's give him a round of applause. All right. Hey, everybody. Um, so, yeah, my name is Christian. Uh, my background, I didn't really put any background on here, but um, I, I have kind of a engineering background and undergraduate in graduate school at, uh, at uh, Air Force Academy and that led to an Air Force career. Um, Stanford doing uh, operations research as well and economic systems and then an MBA as well as um, a career doing um, IT ops and then cyber, cyber warfare uh, on the intel side, offensive side, deployed to Afghanistan to, uh, to run the offensive war with uh, our Aussie and Brit partners over there. And then uh, retired 2014 and have been doing uh, startups ever since then, right? So um, what I want to talk about today is kind of looking back over that time, what, what I've seen, what I've kind of learned, and then how does that potentially help, um, help organizations figure out risk for cyber and help really kind of come to terms with, we don't have to do stuff about everything, but we, we, we want to know what we should do, take action against and figure that out, right? So, so I like to start with a story of uh, kind of the, the origins of operations research, right? So I mentioned I, I did undergrad and graduate uh, in school in operations research, but what does that mean? It really started in World War II with a statistical research group. And what they did or the question that they had to answer was where should we put armor or additional armor on our bombers, right? And the data that they had, the data that they were provided was this picture here, which shows bullet holes and anti-aircraft holes in the planes that came back, right? Like those that went out on missions and the planes that came back. So um, some of you might know this story, but for those that don't, kind of the initial assumption to the group is, hey, we, we got to put some armor over those red spots. Let's figure out how much, let's figure out where exactly to do that. But what they, what they kind of figured out is, hey, we're missing a whole bunch of data, right? These are the planes that came back. We want to really kind of figure out how do we make more planes come back? How do we actually protect those areas that don't have bullet holes because that's where they're getting shot and that's where they're crashing after they get they get those bullet holes. So they, they came up with a, an alternative hypo hypothesis was the planes that are, are crashing are the ones that are not not the bullet holes here, it's, it's where there's absence of data, right? So the threats that are taking them down are where they're getting shot and we don't have that data. Um, and my contention here today that uh, that I'll step through in the discussion here is that same thing is happening in cyber today. Right? We're really fixated on what we know when there's a whole bunch of stuff that we don't know we could know and we're starting to develop tools in the industry that, that start to take us down that road but we, we're not really trying to figure out what are we missing yet. Right? That's the contention that I have um, that I'll step you through. So, and this is a dialogue if you guys have questions along the way I'm probably going to make some assumptions on what uh, what you guys know or don't know. So happy to happy to take questions along the way, or have a have a sidebar afterward if if uh, you'd like. All right. So um, so why do I say this? <coughs> year after year, what we see from Mandy and others is this statistic. It, ha it hasn't really changed off of the 50%, some, some say 30, 35%, depending on how you look at it, but 30 to 50% of threats are being missed. It means they're not blocked, not detected, not responded to. And you know, my, my experience in the military side and then subsequent to that is like the pen test teams, the red teams, they got through a lot of the times, right? It was 100% batting, batting average uh, until really organizations started to prepare for them, right? To really get ready for the techniques that they were going to use and know that they were able to stop those techniques before the team got there, right? Um, that kind of practice, that mentality hasn't been um, implemented, at least not to the scale, right? But 
you know, pen tests are expensive, red teams are expensive. So there's, there's definitely some trade-offs there that we have to be aware of. Um, but this is a significant problem because organizations are already doing a lot of work, right? They're already investing a lot of time and treasure to try to, try to handle their, their cyber risks. But what we're seeing, and this is what I alluded to, is the view on the right, which is kind of like a, a Splunk view, if you will, KPIs that the SOC is looking at and that CISOs and leaders are looking at is the data that we have. It's what threats are we stopping, how fast are we stopping the threats that we're catching, and let's get better at that. When the whole reality is there's a lot of other stuff that's happening that we're just not seeing it, right? Like it's, it's like if you were to shine a black light after a crime scene, you would see all the, all the blood and stuff that, that you can't see otherwise, right? We want to focus on all the threats, not just the threats that we're stopping. Um, so that's what I'm going to be talking about today. So how do we how do we improve performance, right? So if we're missing if we're missing threats, we want to try to get better at that. But that's kind of trying to expose knowledge that we currently don't have. How do we gain that knowledge, and then how do we actually make improvements along the way? Um, so three things that I, I always come back to, and this is I call it first principles, right? It's not this part is not really that complicated, but it's, it's important to understand. The cause, causal relationship here, we have number one, a data, data and mission, right? Like there's business reasons or mission reasons that we have things enabled by IT, right? Put it on the cloud and um, good things will happen. But it also exposes us to number two, which is mal, uh, malicious actors. They're trying to do stuff, right? So with that, we have a whole industry that's trying to stop them, right? Um, there would be no, there would be number no, number three if there was not a number two. Um, but at the end of the day, we want to focus on adversary techniques. My contention is that we want to focus on exploits, vulnerabilities, patch those vulnerabilities, yes, but we need to focus on exploits. We can't just focus on the vulnerability program because uh, there's a whole host of other reasons why organizations are missing, missing the threats, right? So misconfigurations human error, engineering sort of thing, just plain gaps. Um, but vulnerabilities are not going to get us there, right? And, and trying to chase that uh, statistics of, of good patching and good vulnerability is not going to solve the, the exploits. Because there's only about 1% to 3% of vulnerabilities ever turn into exploits, right? So 97% of that work is really focused on stuff that's kind of theoretical that won't necessarily turn into threats. Um, so we, we, we contend that uh, we really want to focus on the threats and make those, make performance against the threats one of the keystones of, of the program. So what techniques are we missing, right? So if we go back to the analogy of the airplane, there's the uh, bullets and anti-aircraft flak that came at the airplane. Well, that's what in, real, in, in cyber, th those are the threat techniques that are coming at us, right? Those are the things that are going to create bullet holes. Um, but which ones are we missing, right? There's obviously MITRE ATT&CK is really helpful. Um, it's a start, right? Um, this just shows for, for an organization what techniques should they be worried about because they're in a certain industry. Um, there's certain techniques that are being, being used already. Um, so which, which ones should they worry about? We contend there's, there's a uh, pretty straightforward prioritization that organizations can do in a few days or a week to really kind of figure out, all right, where do we start, right? There's thousands of variants of all these techniques, so where do we start? Let's look at what's actually being used in the wild, uh, what is actually compromising organizations now. Let's start there and, and use that. Um, many industries, financials, uh, critical infrastructure, they have their own kind of um, reporting within the, the ISACs that'll already have this populated to say, hey, here's our most critical techniques that we recommend our members um, look for and take, uh, take into uh, their consideration as they prioritize and looking at it. All right, so that's really essentially the bullets coming at us. Um, 
now the kind of the new new thing that we're looking at is really what's the system, right? Coming back to one, two, and three, why are we missing them, right? And this is where we'll kind of decompose this anatomy of cyber response to understand, all right, what can happen? And then for us, where is that happening? Why is that happening? And then, and then we can start to make um, inferences, insights, conclusions, and recommendations from that. So why are we missing them? A couple reasons. <coughs> Reason number one, cyber fails silently, right? So when a bad thing happens, you might know about it, but likely you just missed it. You don't know about it at all because they don't want to get caught. It's not necessarily intended to be caught. But when that happens, it's just uh, like a thief in the night. You don't know that it happened, right? But that's really hard to really figure out if you're good because you're going on assumptions. You're going on, we think we did everything right, but we don't know that we did everything right. Um, and that, that applies across uh, the whole stack, right? All of the investments that you've made for your people, for your processes, for your analytics, for your technology that, that really helps, uh, helps run that program. So that's, that's really important to, to understand is on its own, cyber fails silently, right? So um, the other reason is currently, right, hopefully this, and I think one of the comments just, just before is platforms are starting to take, uh, you know, more and more information in. But currently, cyber is complicated, right? There's a ton of different vendors that are out there, a lot of point solutions, a lot of things that you can do. A lot of people and organizations vying for your time and attention, and they're not going to work together out of the box, right? They might do some things, and even if that one product did things well, doesn't mean that it's tied together with the other products, and those are working well together, right? It's, it's just because it's passing data and allowing good traffic to go through doesn't mean that it's actually uh, effective at stopping the threats. Um, so we need to make sure that when you buy something or get something or have something, that it's actually stopping threats, right? And we want to make sure that it's, it's working and we're getting good return on our investment, right? Like that costs money, costs time for maintenance and operations. We want to make sure that that's all working together. Okay, so um, luckily there's advancements. You know, I mentioned pen tests and red teams that are out there. There's other advancements that have happened. I've heard it mentioned a couple times today um, that we've seen in the, in the marketplace is uh, automated uh, testing of threats that are out there, right? So um, uh, typically called breach and attack platforms or automated pen testing, but ways to go in and emulate those threats and do that in a safe way. Um, that helps make those failures less silent, right? It'll tell you, did this work or not? And then um, you have at least our starting point to say, hey, we need to get better at this. We don't know, know why or how yet to get better, but it's a starting point um, to, to really make that, that silent failure more, uh, more audible and that you can follow that up. Um, but how do we look at across our people, process, and technology? Right? How do we solve that other side? How do we know what our airplane looks like? and where do we need to actually uh, put our armor on our airplane. Uh, we don't want too much armor because then the airplane crashes um, or it can't go as far. Um, but we need to know that, right? We need to know what our airplane looks like and we need to know why things are working and why they're not. So, so what we have come up with is this cyber defense anatomy. And it's just helpful in terms of understanding what can happen, putting in categories, uh, categories and then what we are able to do, I'll say this up front, is when we do testing or testing is done, the categories of response and where it goes in the anatomy is tracked, right? Like that telemetry is collectible, and then that's very, very helpful. All right, so the first thing that we look at is um, the malicious actions, right? So everything that we can test, and the, the good news is it's computer code, so it can be copied, it can be uh, run again as long as we know it, and, and again, uh, I guess I haven't said this yet, but we, we don't look at zero days, right? We don't know what zero days are coming um, by definition. So it's, it's those known threats, those things that were released last week, those can be tested, but those malicious actions we want to start with 
and then look across time, right? So the first thing that can happen is that threat is automatically blocked, right? So with that, we want to know, was it blocked, yes or no? What did the blocking, where did it get blocked uh, in terms of location? And then make sure we keep track of that. But blocking alone is not going to get you there. Um, and oftentimes, things are not blocked at all, right? So um, after that, we want to look at, was it detected? Um, apologies for the graphics, a little bit, a little bit wonky there. Um, same questions apply. Was it detected, yes or no? What did the detection, what product did the detection? Did that data go to your SIEM or XDR? How long did that take, right? So is it getting uh, good information from where it started from, origin, over to the destination, and then that's kind of the detection step, right? So um, if you think of a body, these are the different functions of a body from sight, sound, uh, smell, circulatory, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then the next step is alerted, right? So this is where analytics really come into play and all of the time and, and money and effort that's spent on getting those SIMs and XDRs tuned up. So the events come in, bad, bad thing happened over there, we tested it, we know, we know that it happened because we caused it to happen in a safe way, but there should be a reaction. There should be data coming through and we're looking for uh, the analytics side to uh, determine are the rules firing, is, is some, but something happening with this rule, and then that's how, how the uh, alerts are evaluated as well. From there, uh, there can be a automated response or a manual response, right? So a lot of efforts going into SOAR platforms to automate responses, so it's not just, uh, not just the guys and gals in the SOC actually doing stuff, but able to, to take that and run with it. So we look at, was it generated into an orchestrated res response? Was it manually responded to, right? Did, did the analyst get, get the alert, right? And then did they make a, a good timely decision about that alert? So those are the things that can happen. And then there's the categories of things that didn't happen, right? So no response in terms of wasn't blocked, detected, alerted at all, right? Nothing, it was just missed uh, completely. Next is, uh, a failure kind of in data flow or analytics potentially where the detection occurred but then there was no alert generated, right? Um, so that can be uh, data f not flowing from whatever's doing the detection to the SIM or the SIM or XDR not actually saying, hey, this is a something bad, we don't need to create an alert. But whatever the reason is, and we'll dig into that once we localize it, we gotta figure out why and then does it matter enough to, to fix. So then the last part is no response in terms of, hey, there's an alert, but for whatever reason, can be uh, overwhelmed analysts, can be misconfiguration on the, on the SOAR side. There was no response because it was uh, uh, detected, but there, there just wasn't a response, right? So in, in the difference between all of those colors, different reasons and localized problems can emerge that show us what's going on. Then the other thing that's really helpful is to look at false positives, right? What, as we're doing our testing, what's the rest of the environment look like? Is there a lot of uh, false positives happening, right? They're probably not getting attacked or they'll tell us if they are for real. So is there, uh, for every one of our alerts, is there 20 other, 50 other alerts coming at the analysts and they're just gonna get overwhelmed? They have no chance of, of doing a good response because there's so much uh, false positive sort of alerts come in their way. So this is the anatomy of, of, of alert or res cyber response, right? And the, the metrics that we can gather from that. So for each test that's conducted, um, automated tests and, and uh, the possibility if there's work to be done or categorization and metadata for pen testing, red teams to add this kind of information to, to say, hey, we tested against this MITRE technique and here's the results, we'll look for the results, we'll query, query the different tools and see what's going on. All right, but now that threat testing, that stimulates the system, right? That's, that says, hey, we don't have to wait to be attacked. We don't have to um, assume that everything fails silently. We can go in and get a response from this, uh, the system across our people, process, and technology to see how it works, right? 
or if it works, if it doesn't work, but then answer kind of these fundamental questions. What techniques or sub-techniques were caught, which ones were missed, right? And if they're caught, what caught it, all that, all that sort of stuff um, on the detection side too. And then where are they missed, right? So those categories of, uh, categories of failure help us determine is it a training issue with our analyst? Is it a configuration issue? Is it a um, technology issue? We just don't have a solution, right? Like there's nothing in your stack that's gonna catch this technique. Those are the easiest ones to figure out. Maybe not the most uh, um, easiest ones to pay for, but those, those are the ones that really uh, jump out. Okay, so um, that's cool um, and interesting, but um, a lot of the threat testing uh, platforms have been out there already. They've already been doing um, a lot of this, especially on the, on the technology side, right? To say, all right, what's working, what's not? Here's your MITRE attack report to say for you, here's the, the, the techniques you're catching, here's the techniques that you're not catching. Um, what we see is, is the market going towards um, this type of objective data heading into risk conversations, right? So if we step back um, and look at things like FAIR or things like compliance reports or even assessments that are happening today, it's a lot of subjective data, right? So um, listening to some of the briefings about cyber services um, that are happening today, it's interviews or it's uh, checklists and you fill this out and say, hey, we have X, Y, and Z product, or we have these solutions, and, and we have a SOC, and our guys are trained, we're good to go, right? Because that's what compliance currently looks at is the evidence of existence, but that has nothing to do with actual performance, right? Um, so how are you actually stopping the threats? Um, that, that type of objective answer that boards and executives and, and uh, technicians are really trying to figure out is now starting to be available. And that's where you can start to go into a number of different use cases um, and recommendations and then ultimately to figure out what are we gonna do about it? What can we afford? What are the trade-offs? What should we spend our next dollar on? Um, all of those kinds of things start to get answered with objective data. So um, from the details, right? So like, let's say in, in this, uh, this technique here, there is uh, 40 different variants of, of sub-techniques and um, those results are there. In each one of those 40 is gonna have that anatomy information. But in the aggregate, we can really start to figure out not just why threats are missed, but then because they're prioritized, those threats are prioritized, we can figure out which ones do we wanna, we wanna start solving and then we can start looking at where is it most cost effective to solve this one thing, and it applies to many of those, that, those techniques that are out there. And again, going from objective data of what's actually working in our environment to, as opposed to here's what should work or here's what could work, um, let's actually look at what is working. And then from, from that, I mentioned this, you can determine what to do about it, right? Um, you want to try to mitigate those things, put a, a, a choke point in uh, that, that we use, the term we use on the intel, intelligence side is, you know, they have to use certain techniques and, and they only have one variant or one, one technique that they can use. Let's focus there because then that wipes out um, a lot of their tools or a lot of their capabilities um, as a starting point. We're not going to stop there, but it really disrupts their operations if we can take out their choke points and make sure that they're, they're gonna have to reinvent themselves in, in, some, in some degree, all right? So mitigations are, are things that can apply to many different areas or a solution that, that solves more than one problem. That's a really good place to start. Obviously, you gotta consider the cost of that as well. All right, and then we, since we're keeping track of what um, products are working, which products are not working, right? You have, you have this uh, extra firewall in here, it didn't, didn't actually do anything. Do you need to keep that one around or why? Let's ask the question, why are we keeping this thing around? Um, but being able to pinpoint what products, what solutions, what individual analysts are effective and which ones are, are less effective. 
to at least reveal the information, right? Like, it doesn't mean we have to make a decision, but it helps us um, answer the questions and helps drive those decisions should we need to. Okay. Um, so then you can look at the, the operational side. So all of this technology, process, analytics, and people, they, they come together at the core nucleus, which is the SOC, right? So how is the SOC doing? Is it effective? Is it efficient compared to the industry, compared to where you were last year, right? Are you actually making good, good progress and getting more mature or whatever your goals are, right? Should you outsource? That's a good question, right? Like um, trying to do your own SOC is a hard thing. And a lot, of, a lot of organizations are figuring out, hey, this is probably just something we need to um, utilize economies of scale, economies of talent, and outsource to a service provider. But how do you know that, right? How do you answer that question without uh, beyond just gut feel? And then um, objectively measure risk, right? So um, this, this idea of ob objectivity is, I'm glossing over it, but it's critically important because everything else right now is vulnerability management or compliance or um, subject matter expert opinion. Um, and we found time and time again, unless you know what's actually being stopped, your opinion is probably not correct, right? Because you, you, you're guessing. You, you might be an expert who might have applied the last time you did a pen test, but for this organization, if you haven't tested against the threats, there's a fair chance you're not, you're not catching it. Um, so if you're not taking that into account, um, the opinions and the compliance and the vulnerability patching probably doesn't actually um, give you the posture that you think you do, right? So you want to be able to say, hey, we are actively stopping these threats. We, we haven't experienced it for real, but we've tested against it and tested against it um, in the places that matter to us, right? Like where our critical mission systems are and uh, critical uh, controls. We want to test that and then be able to show that over time, show that versus the uh, threats that we're con uh, concerned about to, sh to see if they targeted us, right? Which is a big if, right? Like that, that is probably the one true if that's out there is if we're targeted, would we be effective, right? Let's answer, conf increase confidence in our answer of would we be effective? Let's, let's get better at that. And that's where we see kind of the conversations in the board uh, for large organizations going to is, what are you doing to ensure that your solutions are effective? And how do you know? Tell me how you know or prove to me that you know with data that I can trust and, and to be able to answer those questions in an ongoing and honest way. Okay? Um, and then what we're also seeing now, this is, um, Something that ha has has started to happen more so this year is uh, packaging, where organizations want uh, to order up a tabletop exercise. They they don't want to try to figure it out what they need to do. They just want to do it, right? Or a purple team a uh, assessment, right? So to prepackage, here's the test that'll uh, populate that to do that testing, make that happen, and then give you the results in a prepackaged way to make it. It's not going to be push button. It's not the easy button, but to make it as, as easy as possible to order that up. That's really where we're starting to see uh, the industry heading, especially consultants and service providers. Okay. Okay. Um, so that's that's really what we're we're seeing in the industry today. You know, my my. Uh, brain is always trying to optimize sort of stuff. So this, this idea of measure what you're missing is, is really, I think, important for the industry and really where we're seeing a lot of uh, progress being made, efforts being dedicated to, and, and now kind of the fruits of that, uh, that effort across the industry starting to show and, and make our, our airplanes come back, have that, have that protection, the right protection, not, not to overwhelm the airplane with armor, but to give them the right amount of protection that informs the organization and, and enables those conversations for risk trade-offs to happen. So I didn't get any questions along the way. I'm happy to answer any questions here. Come on, we've got to have some questions. 
I've got the mic already loaded now. Don't tell me I'll turn it on for nothing. No, I, I wish I had a good accent. I could have done that. <laughs> it's a military brat accent, okay? Yeah, yeah. Navy. Let's give Mr. Sorensen a hand of applause. Right. Thanks, everybody.